Do you ever find yourself in the middle of a toxic place? Welcome to the Parable Podcast. I'm your host, Danielle Zapchang. Today, we are going to flip the script a little bit. I'd love to share with you an episode from the first season of Together We Rise, which is an offering from Women's Speakers Collective. Yes, I have a second podcast focused on amplifying women's voices, and we have almost wrapped up season one. You're going to find me and my co-host, Cheryl Nembard, learning from leaders and speakers and teachers on the front lines, as well as those who are just starting out. We engage with guests from various fields and perspectives who will share their experiences on finding rest, dealing with imposter syndrome, maintaining integrity, pursuing justice, and so much more. But today you're going to hear from pastor, speaker, author, and podcast host, Steve Carter. Here's my conversation from Together We Rise with Steve. so excited to have a huge powerhouse in the building today. Uh, Steve Carter is a pastor, speaker, author, podcast host, sports enthusiast, and formerly teaching pastor of Willow Creek Community Church in Chicago. Steve's passion and desire is really just to bring Jesus in everything that he does. He's a gifted teacher, and he spends his days crafting sermons and messages and so much more while he lives in Chicagoland with his wife, Sarah, and their two kids. So we are so excited. Welcome, Steve. Thank you, Danielle. It's an honor uh, to be with you all. Yeah. Well, Steve, we we haven't met till today, but there are so many people that I know personally that are just really grateful for the impact that they've had, um, that you've had really on their lives. And it it seems to me that, you know, you believe in that we're better together and that's a core value of Women Speakers Collective. Um, And so the funny thing is we talked to Sheena Marquise. She told us her story and she brought you up and she said, you know, you encouraged her in her late 20s uh, that she has a call to preach. So when you hear hear something like that when you're just like you're encouraging other people what does that make you feel like i i don't know i mean honestly like i um people did that for me yeah you know like i i i think like for many of us god has put us around people women and men who maybe struggle to see how they're wired Mm -hmm. you know and really when you when you encourage someone it's like you have this ability to see the imago day in them Mm -hmm. And call it out and like show it to them. And mm. and because you see it, yeah. it somehow gives them courage to believe it just might be true. Mm-hmm. And I didn't I didn't think I could teach, I didn't think I could yeah. preach, but other people did that for me. Mm. And I think it's just one of those ways that as a disciple, as a follower of Jesus, as a as a pastor, as a as a friend, like I want as many people as possible to not see themselves as how oftentimes they might see themselves, but to yeah. see themselves for how God wired them to be. And so mm. for me, it's just kind of fun just to see that. I, the stories when people say that, I'm like, oh my goodness, like super humbling. But it's like, it's it's mainly like, I, I feel like I've never heard anyone ever say, oh, just stop encouraging me. <laughs> like, just please stop. Like it just, it's get it. But I think like we've lost that art and, yeah. and to be able to see people as God sees them and, mm-hmm. and, and remind them, man, I just, I want to do more of that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so true. Like there is the encouragement is huge on my, my factor, but why do you think it's so hard for people to not see that in themselves? Like what has created that in our world and for each one of us? You know, there's probably a myriad of, of reasons. Um, but I, I, I wonder if, you know, shame, mm-hmm. um, the past, I, I think sometimes even in church, um, we have this, this false sense of humility. You know, you, you can't really, you can't really talk about how you're wired because if you do, it might come across as a little braggy. And, yeah. and I just, I don't think that's helpful. And I think part of the beauty of humility is taking up your rightful space of how mm-hmm. God has wired and made you, you know, Daniel Strickland, you know, taught me about that years ago. And I I just, I think, I think what I really want is for people just to be able to, you know, cut away those, like, just those, those, I don't know, the the pieces of them that are just holding them back. And Mm -hmm. uh, you ever hear that story of uh, Michelangelo? Uh, He was being like interviewed and they were asking him how he created the, the statues that he makes. No. And he's like standing with this big chunk of marble and he's like, well, the, the, the statues in there, 
I just got to cut away the dead pieces. And, and I just think that's, Mm. that piece is like, man, in, in all of us, what, what's, what's the lie, you know, Mm. um, what's that, what's that, that shame that I'm carrying on to that's, that's not allowing more of God's goodness and glory and Mm. Christ's love just to, to shine through. And I don't know, I think we just got to be more relentless to, Mm -hmm. to shed some of that old old skin i guess yeah yeah i mean it's definitely a choice like you have to choose to speak into that and into other people's lives because we don't have to we don't have to do that at all but it's like as we become one as we become brothers and sisters with each other i'm just kind of tuning our mind to have that awareness what would be your advice to leaders um that help elevate and amplify specifically women's voices well, I think if if um, you're a guy, um, y- you should do this. I mean, um, just it's it's just plain and simple. I, I think that um, I mean, my my opportunities um, that have been given to me, it's not fair. Mm-hmm. Let's just just say that. Like I I'm good. I'm not that good. Um, and I think you have to look at it and go, okay. Um, am I running from a scarcity approach? Like, mm-hmm. is that what drives me? Okay. Oh man, if I, if I give power away if, or if I amplify or encourage, will there be enough for me? Yes, there will be. Mm-hmm. And what you will do in the kingdom, um, is it, it, it just will be so far beyond you. Um, mm-hmm. some of the women that, you know, I've just had a, I had a privilege to, um, know and maybe play a part a little part in their story but to see them Mm -hmm. leading and preaching and writing and just um building teams i i I couldn't do that Mm -hmm. they're they're like hardwired from heaven to do that (laughs) all they needed was a chance all they needed was someone to believe in them all they needed was just a um a moment Mm -hmm. and you know, I was I was at a conference once and I watched Ann Voss camp and mm. she's a she's a hero of mine, but Ann is a legend. But Ann was supposed to give the closing talk of this conference and she just was like, No, nah, I've closed too many conferences. I, I and there was a there was a woman of color who was like yeah. three rows back and she'd had a conversation with that woman earlier mm. in the conference and just said, I think you're supposed to teach. Oh and she's gosh. like, What? And she gave the the honorarium, gave the honor, gave the moment, didn't push her book. Mm -hmm. And this woman preached the paint off the walls. It was so amazing. And and I just, I sat there and I was like, Ann Voskamp. Mm -hmm. Like, she's not like, oh man, I'm not going to get another opportunity. She wasn't even thinking that. She's like, my job is to give this woman an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I think like, again, learning from women, like I want to be that kind of person. Like mm-hmm. I don't need to teach at the same church 52 times a year. Yeah, It's not good for the congregation. It's better mm-hmm. for them to hear um, people of color and women yeah. and um, people who teach like me. But like it's, I think we're better when and stronger when we get to hear kind of voices that sound and look and reflect um, mm-hmm. what heaven will be. That's so good. Yeah, I love that. We're not having a scarcity approach because it's too easy to just go in that direction if we want to, right? Steve, how long have you been in ministry? Um, I would say 20 20 years. Yeah, Yeah. 20 years. So So in, in 20 years, how has that 20 years just like leading with integrity like changed for you personally? Like that's a big question, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I had I had an amazing youth pastor. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name was Hal, and um, Hal died mm-hmm. um, six years ago in a motorcycle accident. But he he was um, he was he was he was something. Um, yeah. He, um, you know, when I was at, at junior high, high school, he, you know, he'd come to my basketball game or soccer game or. He'd always say to me, he said, Steve, I don't care how many points you score. I don't, how many, I don't care how many goals you score. All I care about is that you're a person of integrity. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And integrity is the only thing that you will spend seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, seasons, years, and decades um, 
growing and it will take seconds to lose. And and he just would say after saying that, Steve, did you have integrity today? And I I just for me that um sometimes you you know you're in ministry, you're you, you say something and it the person that you're saying it to doesn't fully get it then. But then like five years later they start to get it. And then five years after that they, they start to get a little bit more. And then then five years later they start to get a little bit more. And and I think as I as I kind of began to move in different ministries and seeing um kind of the the influence around me, I watched people handle that well and I watched people n- not handle that well. Um, and on my first internship, I showed up at the church to intern under the founding pastor and I was looking for him and they, I asked where he was and they told me, um, oh, this gonna, he's not coming in today. And then during the service, the elder came up and said he had had an affair. And mm-hmm. I remember being rocked by that Yeah. and calling Hal and Hal just said, hey, um, this is why I've been telling you integrity matters. Yeah. Um, do you say what you mean and mean what you say? Mm-hmm. And do you have the character? Yeah. And are you working on your character as much as you are working on your preaching gift? Are mm-hmm. you working on yeah. becoming someone who mm-hmm. um, doesn't just know the right theology or know what to teach about Jesus? Mm-hmm. Are you someone who actually is living and relentlessly um, trying to become more like Christ? And and again, mm-hmm. I, I, I um, it's it's hard talking about integrity and talking about character because. Mm-hmm. Um, none of us have arrived this side of heaven. It's like <laughs> yeah. Ruth Bell Graham. Have you ever seen her tombstone? No, I haven't. Oh, Danielle, you have to look it up. It, okay. It's amazing. It, it says her name, her date. She uh, was born, date she passes. And then underneath it, it says end of construction. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> it's amazing, right? <laughs> and so, um, so I think like, I think for us, um, when you talk about character and you talk about integrity, mm-hmm. um, recognizing you're you're still in process but yeah. are you doing the work mm-hmm. not just talking about it are you are you relentlessly shining a light and saying search me O lord um mm-hmm. and so for me i think it's just been the mentors um the women and men in my life who i've just seen um they don't care how good a teach is they mm-hmm. don't care how big a church is they just care like do you say what you mean and mean what you say yeah you know <laughs> I love what you said of like how we have to do the work because that you're think when you think of like, Oh, I want to be a pastor. I want to be a preacher. I want to like work in nonprofit. Like, yes, there's all the things that we have to do, but it is, it's truly that soul bearing experience that we really need to hone in on. Um, you know, that's continually developing that personal integrity, like Hale said, um, you know, what tips or encouragement would you give somebody that really is, it may be in the spotlight, not at all to just really ground down into that of just being like, I need to be more aware of my integrity. Mm. Well, I think there's a, there's a handful of ways. Um, one, just go on Twitter and, and just know that, um, the, the, if, if Twitter or X, whatever we want to call it has, has taught us anything is the truth will come out. Yeah. So every, every day, the truth is coming out mm. and and that that should um put the a little bit of the fear of the lord in us mm-hmm. in the sense of like oh man um and then the second i think is um what are what are some values that are important to you so mm-hmm. my biological grandfather he's um was a multi-star general he's buried at mm-hmm. west point but when he went to west point they it was um the chaplain started around the time he was there and he brought a prayer it's called the cadet's prayer Mm -hmm. and it's beautiful um and and uh, some of the phrases are strengthen and and increase our admiration for honest dealing and clean thinking and suffer not our hatred of hypocrisy Mm -hmm. and pretense ever to diminish Encourage us in our endeavor to live above the common level of life. Make us to choose the harder right instead of the easier wrong and never to be content with a half truth when the whole can be won. Mm-hmm. And I, I think those lines, am I living above the common level? Yeah. Am I choosing the harder right? Have I grown content to the wrong thing? And I think if you can start to like mine that, I think the Lord and the spirit will just will begin to show and then it and and as those p- 
pieces and spaces and places in your soul and your heart begin to arrive, uh, arise, like rise up? Like, what do you do with that? Is it bring it to a mentor? Is it share it with a friend? Is it bring it to a, a counselor or a spiritual director or a pastor? But I think what's the step then to move towards more health and wholeness? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you were talking earlier about when you were interning and when you found out what that pastor did, there's like this sense of like, you just can't believe it. And I think there's so many of us that are in situations. um, We're just aware of so many things now. And because like you said, the truth is going to come out and it's, it's so sad. It's really hard because, you know, this is not, this is not the the church that Jesus wanted and it's not going to be on the side of heaven. How do you know when it is a church culture that you're in that maybe it's become too toxic to stay. Like, how do you know that when it's time to move on? It's a great question. Um, you know, my dad, um, I remember I, in college, I brought my girlfriend at the time, um, home for dinner and, uh, and she, you know, she left and I really wanted my dad's approval. So mm-hmm. I was like, Hey dad, what do you, what do you think? And he's like, um, it doesn't matter what I think. And I was like, Oh, you don't like her. And he's like, no, 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 no. It's not about that. Um, you just have to know. And, um, everybody's good and everybody's got, um, some crazy in them. Mm-hmm. And you just have to figure out what kind of crazy you can live with that you can pray for, mm-hmm. but you don't spend every waking hour trying to change and fix. Yeah. Um, you can love them in spite of and walk with them and hold space for them. And, and I remember thinking about that going, wow, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty profound. And then I started working in the church and I realized, oh, that's really profound. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that there are um, some cultures that feel toxic to some people and some cultures that don't feel mm-hmm. toxic to other people. Mm-hmm. I think when you recognize your values um, and what you see is um, integral and integrous um, are being violated mm-hmm. um, and you speak up and watch how people respond. Yeah. Because healthy organizations want the truth and healthy people want to follow that truth to a point of not just acknowledgement, but possibly even a point of repentance. Mm-hmm. And And then actually begin to move down that trajectory towards reconciliation. Mm -hmm. But if you find yourself unable to speak Mm -hmm. the truth or ask a question, I'd get curious about that. Yeah. Because the next the the next layer is to stuff it and minimize it. Mm -hmm. Um, And and if you're afraid, then that's not a healthy culture. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think part of that is. I think some of us are contrarians and contrarians get a bad rap, but they actually believe in the potential of an organization. Yeah. And, you know, I I was on staff at Willow um, during the, during the really difficult time there. And, Mm -hmm. and I, um, I didn't want to leave. I love that church. I I still do. I still do. Um, But what's tricky for me is the Willow I knew and believed to be true. Um, was the was the willow that that did the harder right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now a situation was arising where, for some apparent reason, instead of doing the harder right, it was choosing self preservation. Mm-hmm. That did not make sense to me. Yeah. Because all of the muscle memory that I had seen for the way that they had spoken up for Palestinians mm-hmm. or the way that they had spoken up for for people for AIDS uh, for people like the hurting and the suffering. The, the, But now when they were Mm. under the microscope, it was like, yeah, somehow it couldn't. And and for me, that was put me in a difficult spot. So I I feel like I tried to do the best I could with with what I knew. I'm not saying I did it perfect. I tried to do the best I could. But what was hard is I was now put in a spot Mm. to be the face of an organization Mm. and what I was feeling was I now have to play with people's trust. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the definition of trust is really easy. It's a mathematical formula. 
safe plus consistent again and again, over and over on repeat. And I think when we work in the church or we work in leadership, Mm -hmm. every single day we're playing with people's trust. Yeah. And we have to ask ourselves, are we safe? Are we consistent? Mm -hmm. Again and again, over and over on repeat. And when we start minimizing, we start becoming unsafe Mm -hmm. and inconsistent. And we're not worthy of people's trust. And when you feel that, Mm -hmm. um, I think you should begin to pray and talk to wise counsel because um, it's 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 um, only a matter of time where where it's just going to force you either into minimizing or into Mm -hmm. scarcity or into um, not being the best version of yourself. And and God forbid, it may be even in a situation where you might be hurt. Mm -hmm. Um, So. I don't know. I, I never want people to just leave, um, mm-hmm. but I, but I, I, I think to actually be able to get curious and and say, is this a place mm-hmm. worthy of me giving my trust? Yeah, and a place that I actually trust to say the harder right. Mm, that's so well put, Steve. Thank you for just being honest and sharing about that. I'd love to know after, like after you chose to leave, what was that season like for you? to just step out and say, I'm kind of in the unknown. <laughs> like, what were you feeling? What was going through your head? Because um, that had to be like a, a huge trajectory change for yourself. Yeah. Um, it was it was a mess, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think you, you, um, it's just, it was, it was overnight, you know, like mm-hmm. I, I resigned um, overnight and, you know, you, you, you didn't get a chance to say goodbye and, yeah. um, you know, people would write me and say, you're a coward or you abandoned mm-hmm. us. And, um, you know, I, I, I had a moment in a Starbucks where I'm holding my son's hand and this woman just starts yelling at me. And, um, and, um, it, 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 it was messy. It mm-hmm. just was messy. And, and I think part of that, those moments of, you you don't know if your discernment just got leveled or if your discernment leveled up. Yeah. You don't know was that true that you said? Was mm-hmm. that not true? You, you it it's just you're trying to pick up the pieces um and let's just say one thing like I um was fortunate enough where people gave me some opportunities to go and teach. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like um starving my family wasn't starving like i but i knew i couldn't stay two minutes away from willow where mm. i was living yeah um and so we i i i just sensed like the lord one night just say go to the desert and wait for instructions and wow. I, I literally thought it was like metaphorical like <laughs> you're gonna move to like shreveport or you know like somewhere <laughs> like like i don't know like there's somewhere different because my me thinking about achievement and winning i was like mm. well what's better than chicago where can i go where can i and that's that was the muscle memory in me mm. like achieve your way out of your pain yeah um and i really just as i started to journal more i felt like um the Lord said, you can't achieve your way mm. out of this. You can only grieve your way through it. And and I think mm. I didn't know how to grieve. I didn't know how to grieve the loss of my mentor. I didn't yeah. know how to grieve the loss of a congregation. I didn't know how to grieve the loss of my dream job. I didn't mm. know how to grieve what this did to my kids. I didn't. Yeah. And and I, I think I spent three and a half years in mm. the desert meeting with spiritual directors, uh, working mm. on my soul, um, reading as much as I could. But yet still trying to teach and write and do do good kingdom work because the church didn't hurt me. Five mm-hmm. people did. Yeah. And and my work was to learn how to forgive and allow my heart to be mm-hmm. ready so that if a chance ever comes for reconciliation, may it be so, Lord. May it be so. Mm-hmm. But that that desert season um, was a season for me just to to bring the RPMs down to really mm-hmm. start to feel and grieve and um it was really redemptive and healing yeah. in a lot of ways. Very hard. Not something I'd recommend, <laughs> but it was really good, I think, for who I'm becoming. Yeah. I mean, this is why I love stories because, um, you know, we could say, wow, like he was like the pastor at this huge church. But, you know, the reality of um, having an integrity, like it's hard. And, you know, there's like some hard work that needs to be done when we have to step away. And, um, 
Just so thank you. Thank you so much for just being honest about that. And like the reality of what that is, it's yucky and it's messy. Um, but you know, when we walk through these kinds of things, like to know that God, God meets us there in the desert and it is so good. And we can come out on the other side. Well, I mean, I think, I think that's really helpful. Like I, I, but I think, you know, one thing Hal used to say to me, I remember I called him when I got Mm -hmm. our first house in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And, and I'll never forget, he wasn't happy for me. I thought (sighs) he was going to be happy. And he just said, Hey man, here's the thing. Now you have a mortgage Yeah. and, and now you need your job. Mm -hmm. And, and the problem is, is when you need your job, oftentimes your prophetic voice Mm-hmm. will be diluted because now you have a house payment. And and I and, and so he just said, Hey, promise me that um that prophetic fire, mm-hmm. you won't squelch that to keep the stuff. And mm-hmm. I was like, Okay. Mm-hmm. Like I, I I hope so. Like I don't know, you know, and, and, and then you and then you put yourself in those situations and mm-hmm. I mean you just have to you have to rely on stronger mm. braver people and for me that was the women yeah the women who who had the courage mm. to speak up and i'm gonna choose self-preservation like what like that math yeah. doesn't add up um or you have these moments where you're choosing to see mm. and watch like um women people of color like actually yeah. knowing how to suffer and mm-hmm. and and talking to them and going oh man and so I, I, I honestly, mm-hmm. like, I don't know if I could have done it on my yeah. own. Mm-hmm. I, I had to look and see the bravery of the women and the bravery mm-hmm. of, of people who had gone through suffering well. And I just was like, all right, if I'm going to, if I'm going to do anything, I got, I, I'm going to follow mm-hmm. their lead. And yeah. that was what was helpful for me. So good, Steve. Um, before we wrap up, I'd, I'd love to know, you're an excellent speaker. You really are. Um, what would be some like top three training tips for female communicators? Ooh, that's a great one. You know, it was so awesome today. I actually um, was coaching um, a female teacher out in uh, Michigan, uh, Rachel, and she's awesome. Um but one of the things we, we were working on today was finding your voice. Mm. And, you know, I, I, that's, that's one thing I really work hard at because yeah. I think any emerging voice, mm-hmm. um, oftentimes you, they start to teach and you're like, oh, you've been listening to Chris Kane. You know, you've been listening to Judah. You've been listening to Daniel Strickland. Like you, you get yes. that sense. And, and, and again, I understand that, but I think the hardest work is going, mm what's your sound? Yeah. Like how, what's that sound? What's that, 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 that piece of fire that God has put mm-hmm. in you. And so, so working with someone on that, um, is, is really, really great. The second piece is, um, every time you teach, uh, I think of these six words, mm-hmm. there is an ache. So what's, mm-hmm. what is the ache, um, in the text that, connects with the people in your congregation. Mm -hmm. Secondly, everyone who's a part of your congregation, yes, they have an ache, but they also have a good desire. Mm -hmm. And how does this text like actually call out that good desire? And every place that you preach has a stronghold, Mm -hmm. has somewhere in somehow that the devil has uh, a foothold in that part of culture. So how are you, how are you like speaking to an ache, calling out good desire that actually prepares people to address the strongholds around them? Mm-hmm. And then, and then I think simply put, when you write your talks, um, just think about pain, premise, promise. Mm-hmm. What's the pain, the problem, um, problem, premise, promise. What's the problem that you're trying to ask or solve? The premise from God's word. And if people actually put that into play, what's the promise benefit for their life? Mm-hmm. You, you kind of circle around those six words and pray, mm-hmm. knowing your sound, um, Man, I think I think it's um, just powerful. Yeah. And then um, last thing I say is um, find people who are for you, especially mm-hmm. women. Um, I think what shocks me sometimes is how guys aren't very supportive or don't know how to actually coach and say. And secondly, what actually surprises me, even maybe a little bit more, is how um, sometimes other women aren't supportive mm. of other women. 
Yeah. And, and I, I think the discernment piece is who are people who are for mm-hmm. you? And that's, yeah. that's, that's literally why I love like the women's speaker collective. Like, mm-hmm. cause you all are, you, you model this so well. It's like a, a crew of people who are for you. We're mm-hmm. so for you that we're going to tell you the truth. But like, I, I, I think you got to find that circle mm-hmm. of people who love you so much. They're going to help you hone that sound, that unique voice. And they're just going to, they're going to tell you places that you could have been more you. Yeah. And you do that stuff. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> just one, two, three. You'll be fine. But truly, like I wrote all the notes down. We'll put everything in the show notes because it was so good, Steve. Um, one last question. As we end our time with every guest, we love for them to finish the sentence. Together we, and then fill in that blank and, and kind of just give us a, an idea of what that means to you. Together we choose the harder right mm. and live above the common level of life. And never be content when our integrity is on the line to choose anything but what God would desire. May it be true in me. May it be true in you. May it be true in us. Amen. Gosh, Steve, it was such a pleasure. Thank you so much for just joining us today and and that we get to hear what's been on your heart and what you've been learning and kind of just helping us navigate what integrity looks like for you. So appreciative. If you want to get in contact with Steve Carter, all of his information is in today's show notes. Steve, thank you so much. Didn't you just love how he went from one question right into a story as an explanation? I thought that was so amazing. Just as a reminder, this was an episode from the first season of Together We Rise, an offering of Women Speakers Collective. So glad to be a part of that team over there. You're going to hear me and my fabulous co-host, Cheryl Namard, talk with some amazing women and men in leadership. And we just get to amplify women's voices so much more. To connect with Steve, simply visit DanielleZapchank.com for details and find out more about Together We Rise. And here are two reflection questions from our time with Steve. Number one, what is one way you can amplify other women's voices in your life by bringing them maybe to the table, asking them their thoughts, including them in your church leadership? Number two, is there a certain culture where it has become too toxic to stay? Work, church, maybe it is the books you read, what you scroll or watch day to day. Is it time to leave? That's going to do it for today. I'm grateful that you took the time to spend it with me. Remember, your parable showcases how God guides you, even when it's toxic. I'll see you back again next week on the Parable Podcast. Parable Podcast.